what happens when you mix Red Bull and Ferraro Rocher? You get a golden snitch. <laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome to the second episode of the Daily Nostalgia Show. Today I have another great episode store for you. So let's kick off the show. The first thing I have for the Retro New News is there's an officially licensed 195 piece Ghostbusters keycap set for your keyboard. The Ghostbusters key set has provides a standard layout with novelty and accent keys such as the classic No Ghostbusters Local, the Fakeman key, and the Ecto-1 and many many more. It's designed by Novel Key's creative director Neflock. Shipping is restricted to Canada and the United States, unfortunately. The good news is, though, it's only $99. I would love to have a Commodore 64-themed Ghostbusters to go with the game. Now, the second bit of news I have is a French modder Retro Relics has created the world's first Atari Lynx Mini. For those of you who have never seen an actual Atari Lynx, the handheld was pretty beefy. It definitely wasn't something you could put in your pocket and carry to school. I know definitely that the fanny pack that I used to carry to school would not hold it. It was released in North America in 1989, and it was released in Europe and Japan in 1990. It was an 8- and 16-bit handheld. That means it had an 8-bit and 16-bit chip. The Atari Lynx had a backlit screen and was a pretty big powerhouse for its day. The French modder Retro Relics says the Atari Lynx Mini is 99% to the original. The only difference is it cannot be charged through the ports. The way he charges it is removing the battery door and plugging it in. He went to even as far as to create the actual box and booklets as you see in the video. The link to the full video will be in the description so you can watch it for yourself if you want. Be advised, it is in French, so I would suggest turning on the closed captioning so you can understand it. The Atari Lynx is one of the few systems I do not own yet, so I'll definitely have to pick one up. Now the real question is which game to play first. And the last story I have for Retro New News is later this month, it'll be my birthday and I'll be turning the Big 5-0. It's hard to believe it's been 50 years. Expect to see some cool stuff that I picked up for my birthday in the next episode of the Daily Nostalgia Show. My friend Cliff is building two childhood computers that I grew up with, the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. Right now we are working on the Commodore 64 and I would say it's about 70% done. It's going to be pretty brand new with all the stuff we're installing with a custom case and a bunch of other stuff and hopefully it'll be done soon and then we can start on the VIC-20. Now that is it for Retro New News. Now on to games I'm playing. The first game I'm looking forward to playing that I haven't picked up yet is the Metroid Prime Remaster. It just came out. I'm picking up the physical edition and I ordered it from PlayAsia and it should be arriving in the next few days after you see this video. So I'll definitely be playing that. And the only difference from the Asian version to the American is it has a couple extra languages and a different cover. The new game I'm playing now, the FMV game called Who Pressed Mute on Uncle Marcus on the Nintendo Switch. It's a well-written story about Uncle Marcus who has been poisoned and wants to find out who's trying to kill him. Here is a synopsis of the story of the video game. The family quiz is a long-held tradition, but this year Abby received some shocking news. Someone has poisoned Uncle Marcus. Make decisions throughout the story to uncover the truth and try to save him before it's too late. To download it, you will need 10.8 gigabytes of space on your memory card. The game is rated M for Mature. I don't want to give the story away, but it's well-written, funny comedy story. 
The production company is called Wales Interactive, and they have plenty of FMV games. If you're interested in these types of full motion videos games, or just want to play something different, then check out Wales Interactive because they make some brilliant games. The last game I'm currently playing is the BitTrip collection of games on the Nintendo Switch. BitTrip Core, BitTrip Fate, BitTrip Void, BitTrip Flux, BitTrip Beat, and BitTrip Runner. I remember back in the Nintendo Wii days going to my friend's house and enjoying playing the uh, BitTrip Runner and racing across the moon, kicking down crystal walls, sliding under chomping moon slugs, bound through ammonic mines, and facing off against a minor mech. Dash through the big city on a quest to find friends to defeat the, to the final boss together. You play as Commander Video. So dash through more 50 levels of bopping chiptunes inspired the soundtrack by special guest Animanaguchi. The collection should still be on sale on Nintendo eShop. I bought it for under $5. All the games I just mentioned, you'll get like six different games. So that's pretty awesome. And I'll be posting, like I said, one to two videos a week. I'll be doing Thursdays and Fridays. Now, let's check out what came in mail for mail day. Today I got some more fantastic unboxings and things to show off. Things that came in the mail over the past month. And I'm really excited to show them off. So without further ado, let's check them out. First, I got the Masters of the Universe Manny Faces. This is the Retro... A play one the classics line and looks pretty cool so we'll check that out pretty awesome I got something pretty cool from my buddy and that is the G2 Optimus Prime which is basically G1 he needs a little cleaning up still but there he is there's Optimus Prime and the G2 comes with a voice box which is kind of weird doesn't sound like Optimus Prime, so he's going to fix that with some kind of new electronics he's going to put in there that'll make it sound like Optimus Prime. And it also came with the G2 trailer, which in G2, Optimus Prime likes letting everybody know he's Optimus Prime in disguise. So, can't miss him. This has Optimus Prime across the trailer. So, pretty interesting. Black trailer instead of the gray, or whatever color it was in G1, I think it's gray. So anyways, that is it. And also for Transformers, I, I got this a little bit ago, but didn't make it to the last episode, but the Christmas edition of Optimus Prime, which has got the candy cane colors, which looks pretty interesting. So I can't wait to open that up. And I uh, got also Lady J from G.I. Joe. These figures are looking pretty cool. And we'll check that out. Pretty awesome. And last but not least, I'm building a computer. I am turning the big 5.0 this year. It's coming up pretty soon. And I wanted to build two computers for my birthday. So I'm building the Big 20 and the Commodore 64 with new parts. Pretty much new parts. There are going to be some old parts in there, but pretty new overall and got a lot of bunch of parts so it came from digikey a lot of electronics i think it's called cmbstuff.com has the uh, building list of all the parts and they have some parts and things up there also but you can get a lot of the stuff the checklist of all the parts you need to build like your own commodore 64 or vic 20. i believe they have a sheet for both a building sheet and this is the parts that came in. So DigiKey is one of the places. DigiKey Electronics, DigiKey.com. Not sponsoring them, but they are pretty cool that they have all the parts. So you can build a newer computer. Also, Mauser Electronics. MauserElectronics.com, I believe it is. Or Mauser.com. I'll have to look that up and put it in the description. They also have parts and then the rest of the parts because there was waiting lists and things like that or you had to buy a certain number of parts so I had to go with other places. Came from other random various places online 
such as eBay and some people were selling other parts from Europe and then one person in Italy. So I got a bunch of different parts here and some newer things that'll have dual SID chips and things like that to make the sound even better. And you probably don't need to see the rest of these because DigiKey will have the same thing, a bunch of parts in there. Nothing interesting, unless you're into building computers, then there may be some stuff in there for you. And like I said, I am not building the computer, my buddy's building it for me. So I'm supplying the parts and he's doing the building. First off here is G2 Optimus Prime, is or G2, yes, it is the same one as G1. I am missing the uh, attachable hands, so I'll have to find some hands and get a new smokestack repaired and probably have them painted chrome again or get to replacement chrome uh, smokestacks for him but overall looks pretty cool and a new sticker kit so he does need a little TLC but it is the G2 Optimus Prime Also, here is his trailer, the G2 Optimus Prime trailer. These pull off to the side, ramp goes down. This opens up like that. And he's got a turret that comes out missing wheelie. So I'll need to find wheelie also. missing also the canopy that goes here and wheelie the little roller car but there is the g2 trailer for optimus prime okay so here is many faces let's open it up and check it out So there is many faces for a Masters of the Universe. And it's nice and tight so it doesn't turn easily, which is a good thing I guess. There's his robot face, the green face, the monster face, his human face, so there he is. And let's compare him, he does come with his blaster. So I'll open that up real fast here. There is the new classic look of many faces. Let's compare him to the G1, if you want to consider it the generation one many faces see what they changed and as you can see the chest plate is a little different the paint job is definitely different more tan look not so much yellow uh, and quite a bit difference in the uh, chest apparatus including even the head actually a little bit not the face itself but the helmet so some differences differences in the boots and in the back, quite a bit different, some more detail on the old one for the little apparatus that goes around him. They kind of did a little bit less on this one, just changed some things. So anyways, that is it for, oh, actually the top, the dial is smaller too. So that is it for many faces. So here is the new one, and here is the OG. Okay, so here is the Holiday Optimus Prime. As you can see, candy cane colors, Transformer. Happy Holidays from Optimus Prime. Got the little Autobot logo with the Christmas hat on it. And without further ado, let's open it up. Here is Optimus Prime. Interesting, just notice he only has one smokestack. Huh. I wonder if it's supposed to be like that. Uh, there is the Holiday Optimus Prime. 
So as you can see, there's the front of the trailer. It looks pretty awesome with the Autobot Christmas hat on logo. Side of the truck. And the back top. Nothing special there. Pretty cool looking, especially for the holidays. If you, I'm surprised they even made these type of cool looking Optimus Prime, you know, Christmas editions. Pretty awesome. Okay, so here is Holiday Optimus Prime. He looks pretty awesome, actually. Transforms much different than most Optimus Primes. His, his front becomes his legs, and his basically wheels become the top, so definitely a lot different. Pretty awesome candy cane looking weapon. He looks cool in the colors that he looks like. And he can sit in his trailer like this as it sits up and has a little robotic telescopic arm that works on him. And we can compare it to the old school G1 Optimus Prime. Or G2 actually I should say, but it is a G1 model. The only difference really is there is a little faint thing faded now, but it would they put Optimus Prime Autobot right there on his leg in yellow. But basically same thing so it transforms a lot different as you can see the wheels here the trailer becomes or the the back of the truck becomes the legs whereas this it's total reverse it's basically upside down pretty awesome not too hard to transform i'm not going to do it on camera because i'm not good at that and he's got a cool looking weapon and like it really like it and now the matrix leadership is inside here tucked away in there I'm not sure how to open it up then try that there is the matrix right there we can take it out if you wanted to so pretty awesome Optimus Prime wish there was more details especially like maybe an advanced sticker kit would do that wish there was a little bit more to it and uh, and a little bit more uh, details but pretty awesome overall And finally, but not least, G.I. Joe, Lady J. I don't collect G.I. Joes, not anymore, at least as a kid probably did. But I was given this one, and it's still pretty awesome. So a lot of, they've done a lot of fantastic job with the new line. A lot of details compared to the old stuff, and a lot more weapons and things like that. So let's open it up. Okay, so I have her equipped with all her weapons becomes a full gun there she's got a little spear knife there carries one in her rucksack and there she's got her ball cap on so it's and her knife in her sheath here so carries everything so it's pretty uh, cool lots of detail with this uh, lady J so all these GI Joes look very nice they have come a long way in the figures so so pretty awesome lots of detail in these figures so very impressed Okay, so here is Why You So Punny, I Know What You Meme. The first one comes from my friend on Discord, a guy who posts things. How you do you know when you're at a gamer's birthday party? Because there's so many streamers. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. And my other friend Chris has sent a meme in. When your friends call Link Zelda. Isn't that so true? That happens quite a bit, more than you know. I think I've even called Link Zelda a couple times in the day. What happens when you mix Red Bull and Ferraro Rocher? You get a golden snitch. <laughs> that one is pretty funny. I'm sure a lot of Harry Potter fans will get that one out there. The second one is this guy's looking at swans at a pond and he sees this heart and he's like, ah. And then he sees a bunch of swans because he gets out of the weeds, sees a bunch more. And instead of a heart, it says, nobody loves you. That is classic. <laughs> it's too funny. And sent from my friend Michael. I once tied all my watches together. Then I realized it was a waste of time. That's too funny. And finally, one from me. I know it's cheesy, but I feel great. Now I couldn't resist getting something cheesy in. Anyways, that is it for episode two of the Daily Nostalgia Show. 
Now, I'm bad at advertising, so if you could share with this with your friends or on your social networks, it'll definitely help out greatly. I'm trying to grow the channel. Anyways, that is it for this episode. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and as always, have a good one. Take care, everybody. Until next time.